Well, there is no possible way that that mower is magically going to climb up on top of that. So, that's the beauty of editing. Now we can get to work on it. This one's getting a new brake slash stop cable installed on it. So we're going to do the Bruce Pender style, although I'm not going to clean it up and do all that that uh, Bruce typically does. Because they're needing this pretty quick. So let's get busy. First thing we're going to do is painstakingly remove the cable. That took longer than I expected. Now we're going to relieve it here of its perch, pull this cover off, and head on up to the control handle that is housing the other end that is also broken. Hang on. Let's get this cover off. One magic bolt. Two magic bolts. Make sure we don't have any more. I don't think we do. There we go. Now this exposes your uh, drive belt right here, but we're not concerned about that because that cable's just fine. This is the cable that we need to change, and these just pinch and crimp, and then you pull them through. So compliments of holding my tongue just right and a pair of right angle pliers we've got that end out now we're going to go that way okay under here we have oh this was used the i thought it was bad but that it's not that ends okay but that's not going to do us any good it still needs to come out so we've just got that nut to loosen up in order to pull that free what i'm going to do is just cut this off and then I can pull the cable completely through. And then we'll see if we can't just snake the new cable through without uh, breaking these connectors. But they're not that hard to break apart, as you can see. They just come right apart. So, let's get busy doing that. Let me just start this with saying, if all you're doing is just wanting to lubricate the cable and you want to pull it off to lubricate it, obviously you're not going to cut the ends of it off in order to do that. But, just to expedite things and get the new cable on there's no reason at all for me to not just nip that and pull that cable on through that moment of silence is brought to you by I was not prepared so here goes the end just nipped it off let's see if that cable is just going to pull out It is not, oh, come on, let go. I need to pry this out right here. It's got a death grip on the cable. There we go. Now let's get her out. And let's take it. All right. The old cable is out. Now what I'm going to do before I put the new cable in is I'm going to grab my cable lubricator and I'm going to lubricate that cable so that we're hopefully not going to have this problem with this mower again until this mower decides it has cut its last blade of grass. So stay tuned, I'll show you guys that. I'm feeling like Superman today. Actually not. Uh, oh, I did want to update you guys on something else, but this is the uh, cable lubricator and it has a progressive tapered channel in here and what you do simply is, let's get the cable out and I'll show you, These, and they're, they're not very expensive, it's like 10 bucks, which for peace of mind and having a cable that's going to last you, you know, a long time as long as you keep it lubricated you're going to be in much better shape just by making sure that you do periodically on your maintenance 
lubricate the cable. So we can go either end. Okay, this is the end that goes against the engine. And this is the end that attaches to the handle. So we're just going to go this end. So just get yourself some cable there. And there's a little hole in the end of that. You just slip it on. Make sure that cable goes into the center of the hole. Then you pull it down until it is as deep as it'll go. You don't yank on it really hard or anything like that. Then you just simply turn these screws down and that'll compress that rubber around it, seal it, and allow you to use the straw and your preferred chain and cable lubricant, which mine just happens to be a PB Blaster product, and squirt it until it comes out the other end. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to step back a little bit so you guys can see the whole process here. Hi! Okay, we're going to tighten it down. I'll show you what it looks like once you got it cinched down. You want to cinch it down enough so that when you try to pull it out, it doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to pull out easily. That is, okay. It's in there, and it wanted to pull out. So we're going to loosen it. We're going to tighten it a little bit more. There. Now it doesn't want to pull out. So. I wonder if I shut that door if the light's going to be a little bit better. Let's try that. That's better. Now you guys can see me. It's funny how the sunshine will mute the lighting in a shop. Or anywhere for that matter. Okay, I've got it attached. I'm going to pull my cable all the way up. And to press the button and just short burst guys short burst and I'm pulling the cable up and down as I do this to help feed the and you can see hopefully the drips that are forming on the cable now if you don't have one of these and you have an open cable sheath like this one is you can just go along and spray the cable exterior and it'll wick in a little bit. You see the bubbles form in there when I do that. So we're gonna do that and we are already halfway down. We're gonna do that until we are saturated all the way to the end. And yeah, it's a little messy. You can see the drip falling off my pinky there. But what I wanted to talk to you while I do this, what I want to talk to you guys about the update was um, I went to Central Indiana Orthopedics yesterday to have my middle finger on my left hand checked out. Yeah, I know you want to talk about procrastinating. And I caught hell from my primary care physician, my pain doctor. I caught hell from everybody. And I even caught hell from the uh, rather adorable nurse practitioner that said if you had come in when it happened, you would be in much better shape by now. But, very simply, uh, that finger locks up on me. That's this finger right here, the middle finger. It locks up on me at night. I'll wake up and it'll be locked to my palm and I'll have to physically grab it and unlock it from my palm. And we are now completely saturated. But, all I had, the only issue, was just tendonitis. That's it. So if I had gone in, when it happened, Zippo would not have been suffering, especially during riding season when that's my clutch hand, uh, would not have been suffering. So, I don't know if you guys remember, I'm getting close to being able to pull that knuckle all the way down where it's supposed to be. And I have much less pain. Uh, I, In fact, you can still see the tiny little red dot right underneath that dirt right there where I got an injection in there of cortisone um, to release that tendon and let that tendon calm down and uh, the gal said the nurse practitioner said 
nine times out of ten you are golden within two weeks so there was also a numbing agent in that so right now that joint is pretty numb as she said the numbing agent will last a couple days I'm only into you know the first day after the procedure I'm 23 hours from the, when I had the procedure done so we'll see what happens I've also got some cream that I rub on um, I don't remember the name of it but uh, that I just rub on there two three times a day just to help the cortisone do its job so anyway let's get back to the matter at hand which is installing this cable be right back the thing we're going to do is adjust this light so that it's not blinding the camera and we're going to thread this through so in order to do that i've actually got to take it off or take the bolt out one of the two so that i can open that gap that'll work right there I have to open that gap wide enough in that plastic retainer to get the cable to come down into the slot. And if you want to see the slot that I'm talking about, give me just a second and I will show it to you. There we go. And then we just push it up through until it stops. Or until we, oh, we have to adjust it. So we'll just leave that loose. And you can see right here, I think, the light's kind of in the way now, isn't it? You can see the end right here and the hook. Just set it on that hook, just like that. That's your beginning. Then we've got to thread it through this, or if you want to be quick and dirty, you could just wire tie it to the outside of it, and that would be fine too. But we're going to do it right since this is Zippo's reputation. We can go ahead and at least get the nut and washer on there so that we don't have any parts floating around. And I have a baby little spider climbing on my glasses. I don't know if you can see that little guy or not. He just dropped off. Nope, there he is right there. Right there. Can you see him? Come on, little feller. You got to go. Saw him out of my peripheral vision. Isn't it fun watching a Zippo video? He just has squirrel moments all the time. I think we're just going to pop this loose because uh, we've got the entire end to get in. So this has quick connects. It's really little quick connects. And then I'm just going to show you here real quick. I'll just take, it, take the cable and just roll my thumb along the groove and the cable just goes right into the sheath. So let me finish doing that and then we'll get the camera back down to the business end. Hang on. All right, we've got the cable secure at the top. We've got it through the sheath, which is just out of view. We've got it through the sheath. Put a new uh, zip tie on there, a nice pretty white one, thanks to uh, David. And now we're going to take this cable end and you'll see the tip that I was talking about that it has on there. Right there, okay. Now, sometimes on the front drive, that's why this slot is on this, the front wheel drive, the cable for the front wheel drive will go through uh, to in, uh, pivot and engage it. This one is a rear wheel drive, so it's a multi-use. But we're gonna push it in until it clips here, but not until we first install the lock. So we've got the lock. Now, we're gonna have to pull a little bit Push it down, engage it, make sure it locks into place. I'll show you what it looks like locked into place there. Okay, pretty easy to see. And then looped here. And then we come back up, we have our handle. And we want to get as much of the slack out as we can. Never let it be said that Zippo does not always give full disclosure. I had to pull it all out and redo it because I forgot one tiny little step and it's important so that's why I'm turning the camera back on and letting you guys know you have to route that cable through the hole in this bracket down here I thought it slipped in here it didn't because the cover this cover wouldn't go on got to go through that hole 
and the only end that will go through that hole is this end up here because of that piece there. So now let's get this cover on and get it on the ground. Well let's see if she'll start and then shut off. <laughs> 